Okay. So, part, uh, so, okay, so part of Vayeshev. Vayeshev uh, Yaakov. Okay. 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 Uh, I think it relates to what this is what I was saying is Lashon uh, Hachna, subduing, sub- subjugating, uh, which is an interesting thing, you know. Eretz Yisrael has this, uh, both this, this, I think, tremendous openness to something very, very beautiful, and it, but at the same time, there's, there's a little bit of a, there's a heaviness there a little bit, but uh, which is, which is it's interesting. Uh, but the heaviness is, I think, again, it, it's only I think to get us to focus internal. And, and if we can, if we can learn to focus internally, then I think that it's really it's, it's such an amazing place. It's really where heaven and earth meet. It's really the spiritual world and the physical world. Like that's the that's the meeting place. Um, okay, whatever. Anyway, uh, so he went back there. It's Canaan. It, uh, okay, so the Zohar. Um, hopefully, we're all going back. Um, as one of my teachers was fond of saying when I complained about being not in Israel, he said, it's better to be in Chutzlarz and long to be in Eretz Yisrael than the opposite. Right. So, right. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so, Rebbe Chia Patach Ve'amar, Rabbi Rav Tzadik Umikula Metzilenu Hashem. He says a uh, pasuk from Tilim. A tzaddik has many problems, uh, and and yet God saves him from all of them. He says, take a look at all the really kind of uh, people accusing, but uh, the accusers a person has. But really, it's a bad translation. Look at all the problems a person has from the time they're born uh, in, in this world. Uh, from the time uh, God puts their soul into this world, the person has tremendous problems. To begin with, the Zohar says, "The cave did not be made From the time a person breathes their first breath in this world, he immediately has a companion, which is the Yitzhar, which is the the negative inclination. Let's say, "Come and eat more, the thief, the petach." which is the same passage that they quoted last week. Um, so the Zohar says, uh, we think sometimes children are, uh, hey, good morning. We think sometimes ch- children aren't aware of what's going on in the world. But the Zohar, I didn't realize it until right now, the Zohar actually points out that from the time a child is in the world, they're aware of negativity. They have right away. They have. They have. They have. So to speak, a yetsir hara, meaning they understand what type of place they're in. They understand all of a sudden there's negativity in the world. Uh, they understand it to the like regarding themselves. I don't know if they understand it as the world in whole has negative. It's more like I didn't get this today, or I got yelled at. Like, do they really get the whole concept of? It's interesting. It's a, qu- it's a great question. And they question. know it through games, like Star Wars, good versus bad. Sure. But. I think I think the, the thing with, you know, it's interesting. I think one of the things we develop uh, is our ability to communicate. I think it seems to me that the, the thing that children have, even babies, um, is they have awareness and they have thought and they have the ability to understand complex ideas. They just don't have the ability to express them or share them. Um, and I think that that's part of what develops, and it's also uh, understanding them in ways that would be, you know, part of being able to express things internally is understanding um, the assumptions that, that exist in a world. You know, if you don't understand the assumptions or aren't privy to them, then you'll have a tough time explaining anything. 
uh, within that whatever context you find yourself. Um, so I, th I think children learn, they have, the, I, mean, I think they have the ability to understand very complex ideas um, and feelings especially, you know, um, but not the ability to express them or to understand the assumptions that go with them. We, we often call it being naive, but really being naive I think simply means not understanding um, the assumptions that, the, the, the assumptions or the context, yeah, that, that is going on. Um, and so kids will often say the funniest things uh, because they don't understand the context, you know. Um, but it doesn't mean they don't. It doesn't mean that they don't understand. I think children have, have a great ability to understand and feel. Um, and it seems to me we could, we could draw this from what Zara is saying in that. Otherwise, the the, the, ne the negative inclination would never bother with them. You know, what, from the time they're born, they need to have an evil, they need to have the heart. Well, who needs it? Who cares? But um, but children grow up to be adults, and however, you know, and their their cycle and their imprint as children affects how they make decisions and what they do. Um, so, well, that's more on a, I guess, on a, maybe a little bit of a, on an ephemeral level. We look at it a little deeper. Um, we talked about last week. Um, the Yetahara as being again like almost your your natural or reactive self, the the kind of what's with you from the day you're born, um, the, the 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 kind of you, how you develop from you know day one to twelve or thirteen. But that's that that's the Yetahara, and then the Zohar talks about then the age of twelve doesn't come until a person's uh, body bar mitzvah. So it's kind of like your um, your most basic self. Uh, and again, we're, we're talking about it. Uh, Yetzirah is, is uh, it's something, obviously, it has a negative connotation, and it is, but uh, in the context of the Yetzirah Tov, the Yetzirah can, can be quite useful and good, and can be kind of channeled towards something good. Um, but it is interesting that uh, I, think, I think it's possible, I mean, if you think about it, let's, let's assume for a moment that the Zohar is telling the truth, that we're all souls that are in a body. So, um, if we're all souls that are in a body, so then uh, we kind of had to be somewhere beforehand. So, we know that the, one of the main features of Olam Haza is the choice between good and bad. Choice. So, uh, probably, I guess, it didn't it doesn't exist as much in the other world. The whole, the whole the choice doesn't, as, and as we understand it, choice would does not exist there. In order for there to be choice, there has to be negativity. Um, so, if you think about it from a soul perspective, uh, not that I remember, but <laughs> you can imagine if, if the soul comes into this all of a sudden and they say, whoa, you know, like, wow, there's there's this negativity, there's something negative here, you know? It could be, pre you can imagine, you know, kids have a lot, to, <laughs> little babies have a lot to deal with, you know, and that's uh, probably why they need so much love, I imagine, you know. Um, but, uh, or perhaps that never changes, I suppose, you know. Um, uh, I guess from a perspective of a soul, you know, to be in a world where there's negativity, where there's even the ability to do something negative is like mind-blowing, you know. Um, I remember actually Rip Shlomo saying, uh, he, he was so funny, he said, you know, imagine, you know, I get invited, uh, you know, I get invited to go out Friday night with this very attractive person, and they they pull up in the limousine and they say, hey, you know, Shlomo, come on, we're going to go to a dance party, you know. And uh, and he would be saying this on, like, on the Bima, you know. And he said, uh, he said, you know, even if I would want to, he'd say, like, my body wouldn't let me. I, I couldn't move. My my feet won't let me, you know. Um, he said, because it's like, I don't really have a, how can I, it's Friday night, it's Shabbos, I don't have a, I don't have a choice. You know, so there are some things that even though, you know, there's this interplay between, like, it's technically possible, you know, and the world is technically possible, but you really do have choice. But on another level, we, you know, we don't really have, you know, we don't. So there's this level of this uncomfortableness between choice and, and um, what we know is right and good. And so, it, anyway, so I think this plays out again in the in the whole conceptions of the Yetzirah and the Yetzir Tov. Um, the whole concept of a person's, so to speak, good inclination or negative inclination or 
a natural inclination, I think is a better way to call the Yetzirah. Again, it's your, your natural self. Um, but it seems to me here that, again, this, this is very interesting, right? From the day the person is born, there's this, this awareness uh, of negativity. Um, okay, so let's go on. The Tachazi, the Hachi, who... So he says, um, it's very interesting, actually, the Zohar points out that actually the Yetzirah is really actually one of the key human traits. It's part of what makes us really human, says the Zohar, um, is that we do have struggles. We do have internal struggles. It's not just that when we see something, you know, it says like a, an animal that sees like a, something negative, like sees a fire or something dangerous, like they, they're gone. You know, they don't have a choice about it. They're just, they take off. Whereas a human being might say, oh, wow, wow what's, what's that? You know, like the Midrash of Amosha Rabbeinu, where he, you know, uh, you know, he, he, they wanted to see if he, you know, he's going for, well, actually, that's a different Midrash. What's that? Wait. He's going for which? <laughs> right, no, and he, and he was smart, though. See, that's the thing. He didn't go for... They had coals and... Uh, right, is that right? Yeah. yeah, coals and, like, gold. And he, he was... He went for the coals. He was going for the coals? But was, he, he was going to... But he was going to go... He was going for the gold. gold that's and right. Then and then the angel, angel moved his hand, hand over, and then he grabbed the and coal. And then he put it in his mouth, put and his mouth. that's why. Right, 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 right. right, right. So... <laughs> So it's interesting. So, so uh, yeah, Moshe Rabbeinu. It's an interesting insight into Moshe Rabbeinu in terms of, uh, in terms of again being a baby and, ha- and actually and having an awareness of good and bad, of something negative. Um, but, but even the possibility again, even not as a baby, but it, as you know. Again, an, an animal has instincts, and so when they see something negative, they see a fire, says the Zohar, they, they run. You know, whereas human beings, when we, when we see negative things, we don't necessarily run. We kind of, it makes us kind of curious, and that, that's unique to, to human beings. We might engage, we might try to think we can solve it. Mm. You know, we might look at it, and it might attract us, like, mm. you know, oh, this is something maybe I could, you know, Influence, you know, I could put some water on, I could stop it oh, from spreading, whereas an animal would never do that. Uh, oh, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. really interesting. I think that's I think that's right on. So it's 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 a good example of how our our um, our inclination, <clears throat> our, our our basic way of being of being curious and uh, somewhat attractive attracted to negative things. Maybe the whole point is for us to because we're supposed to fix those things. You know, that maybe when we see something negative, as opposed to an animal who's just running away, we sometimes go towards it. Um, maybe not necessarily because we're bad, but because we have the ability as human beings to fix a situation. So we have the, you know... It's a proactive Yeah, it's a pro- yeah so we have, we have the Yates We have the ability to, to engage... Um, to engage reality in a way that makes it a little bit better. Um, but in order in order for that to be the case, we have to have a... It's very interesting, actually. We have to, it seems like we have to... In order to be in the world, we would have to have a connection to what's going on in the world. So we have to have a connection to negative. But our souls, we're taught, are part of God. They're, they're, they're nothing negative associated with them. So we're, it's almost like we're given a, an overlay. We're given this personality. We're given this thing that mimics or covers or encloses who we are <clears throat> and allows us to be in the world. And that's the it's, it's It's what allows us basically to be in the world. And so the key is not to get, not to get too caught up in it. The key is to, again, recognize uh, this aspect of ourselves, this... Um, basic, natural aspect of ourselves, um, and then use uh, kind of pro-action, use um, our ability to, to make conscious decisions in the world, to, to want to improve the world, uh, as a means of channeling all that, that energy. 
And in that way, we're taking the kind of very basic, uh, the very basic uh, nature of this world and changing it. You know, we're, we're taking the Yetzirah, the, the natural way of being in the world, and we're kind of casting it in a new light. We're, we're, we're channeling it into something positive. We're not letting it rule us. We're rather ruling it. We're taking our basic, imp basic imprint of our personality and, and using it to do good in the world. Uh, and, good, and good that we specifically want to do. You know, you can't... You can't uh, uh, I, I think it's hard to ever really do something in, unless pos really well unless you really want to. You kind of have to want to do something to really make it work. And so we have things we, we naturally go towards and what we, we kind of naturally want to do. Um, those are also, uh, the Gomorrah writes about this, also from God. Um, you know, um, people are very uh, excited about being a doctor or about being a lawyer or about whatever it is they, they want to do with their lives. Um, the Gomorrah writes that uh, God has like a special department where he gives souls like these little desires to do certain things, you know, to be a to be a computer technician or to be a doctor or whatever it is, or a musician. And because because he wants to, you know, it's almost like there's a need for them to do certain things, and there's a need for this certain thing to happen in the world, and this soul is the one to do it. And so he gives them the desires and what they need to do those things. Yeah. Um, so... I think so it's like like, fix, like fixing fixing the world, you know that 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 uh, again we have this basic imprint of a personality which we're given from the day we're born, and then we have around twelve or thirteen we get an ability to make conscious deci decisions above our kind of basic way of being. Um, and we get to engage the world in a proactive way, as opposed to, we talked about this last week, proaction as opposed to reaction. Yeah. Um, uh, is, um, doing as opposed to uh, passivity. Uh, active instead of passive. And so the, I think it seems to me that the Yetzer Hara is passive, and the Yetzer Tov is, is the active one. You, ha you have to actively engage it. Um, there's a, that, there's a, that Hasidic interpretation of Tehillim, uh, Atzat Hashem Itakum. Uh, literally means that the advice of, of God is everlasting or stands forever. Right? But uh, the way the Hasidim say it is Atzat Hashem Itakum. The advice of God is get up. <laughs> <laughs> Go do something. You know? What are you sitting there? You know? <laughs> Go do something, you know? Whatever it is, whatever you feel like doing, you do whatever, even something, you know. Uh, so, so I think that's that's the concept of the Eitzur Tov. The Eitzur Tov is always something active. It's always something, something that uh, that you decide to do. Outside of again, we we, we talked about this last week. I think, you know, it's an interesting question to think about if I if, if you know we're often reacting and, and with very good reason. That, you know, it can be kind of a scary world. So we need to react. You know. I mean, we need to react quickly sometimes, you know. I mean, even crossing a street is really mind-blowing if you think about it. You know, there's a lot going on there. So you have to be very careful. You have to react, you know. But there's a, um, the, the proactive of the self, the self that can actualize bigger things in the world, and, and, or even just very good things in the world, not necessarily bigger, but things that, that, um, things that necessarily won't happen otherwise. You know, to actualize things that won't happen unless you specifically do them, um, you really have to, uh, for at least for a moment, go outside of, of of your own fear. You have to you have to take a step back from fear and ask yourself, well, if I wasn't afraid, if I wasn't afraid, what would I do? It's a very dangerous question, actually, but it's a very important question. If I wasn't afraid, what would I do? And oftentimes you find, uh, it's a very deep question, and, and you, you'll find that, um, you, I think you find, you'd be quite surprised what you would do uh, in terms of doing something positive in the world. Um, so, okay, let's go on. It's an, an interesting concept. Uh, anyway, um, maybe more coffee. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so this is oh, so this is really okay. So, Volkimna dechiv tov yelled miskein v'chacham and melch zakein v'chsil. Says in um, I think it's Mishlei, is that right? Poor child is better than a wise and old king. Very strange pasuk. So, uh, right? Uh, oh, I didn't finish the pasuk. Asher lo yadala lizaher od. That doesn't know how to how to be careful anymore. Tov yelled. Dahu This this good child or the child this poor child who's good is the uh, Yetzitov. Uh the Yetzitov, yeah. Uh the Hu Yelad. Uh the Ha Mitlay uh meaning from Yelad not meaning like a small child, but Yelad meaning um again from the time of Bada Bar Mitzvah onward. That time period. Teenager. Teenager, yeah. Better to be a teenager who's poor than a wise and old king who doesn't know how to be careful anymore or something like this. Fascinating puzzle. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, right? <laughs> so, the Melazaki uh, Nuxil, the king who's old and foolish. Oh, uh, no, I got it wrong. Wait. Uh, I need some more coffee. Wait, sorry. Let me say this again. Okay. Tov yelled miskin v'chacham. That's it. It's better a... It's better a... That's close. It's better a... Uh, uh, a young... A, a, a young person who's poor but wise than an old and foolish king. That's what it's... Yeah. Okay. okay. Sense. Okay. I was. I, I just thought that would be like an amazing game show question for <laughs> you know, that first one, and then like just get people in it, like you know these boots and answer this, because like I just couldn't imagine what would come out. So this that's is great. That's <laughs> great. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> oh man, that would be a good question. <laughs> <laughs> just see what people make of that. Yeah. Right. Oh God. Um. Well. Uh. Yeah. Um. Okay, so uh, so the yellow tov is, is this teenager who's a wise, wise, a wise teenager, right? So it's pretty. It seems to us we could go right, you know, like oh, I wasn't so wise when I was a teenager, you know. It seems like the opposite, but uh, mamish. But the uh, the Zohar is saying I think something really neat here, which is that. Uh, it goes on, it talks about the thing about the Mel- Melzakin of Chsil, which is the Yetzirah, the old and foolish king, is that uh, the Yetzirah, the, the natural inclination is one that. Um, let's look at the. Okay, let's look at what. Since the, the Zohar starts off with the positive first, if you, you have a. Uh, the teenager. The, the interesting thing about teenagers is they're they really are they're an adult, and yet they're still living at home. They don't really have anything of their own, right? They, they really don't. So now that that can lead to that's where the, the main conflict lies, is that they feel like they can actualize themselves, but they have no resources that they really can call their own, and so that that can be a very precarious situation and can make them feel make them feel very uncomfortable. And uh, one one of the things. It's saying here is the Zohar is saying a tremendous thing. Saying actually, that's a that's a really wonderful place to be. The late Lami Garme Klum that goes on to say that they have nothing of their own. That's the definition of the concept of Malchut, of actual kingship, is to understand. Says the Zohar, a very important concept, which is that actually we human beings actually have nothing of our own. That actually everything is a gift from God. That's the whole concept of, of malchut. And so, as opposed to, um, a, typically you think the king is one who controls others. Uh, uh, the, the Jewish conception of 
being a king or a queen or being royalty is one who is totally and always at the mercy of God, without anything of their own. And so if, if you think about it, in a way it sounds, maybe it sounds kind of heavy, but actually it's kind of freeing in a way. Um, because if that's the case, then um, there's, a certain, uh, there's a certain wonder to life also. It, you, it, you know, if I'm, if I'm controlling everything, you know, uh, I, I might be having a good time or not or whatever, or maybe fulfilling some basic kind of uh, part of me, but it's not wondrous. I'm not going to be surprised. You know, whereas if, if God is really the king, he's really controlling everything, and I realize that I actually don't have, you know, anything of my own. It's really all just a gift. It's being given to me on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. So that's, I'm open to the possibilities. And I'm also open to seeing uh, the needs of others. You know, the problem with uh, the king, and we, we see this in politics all the time, is people are always so shocked that the politicians, you know, took bribes and uh, didn't really care about the people. Well, you know, of course they didn't. All, the whole point of politics is to control others. And, you know, when you're controlling others, or when you're making, when you're trying to control something, so uh, you're not open to, you, you can't see the needs of anyone. You just see only your need to control the situation. So uh, the concept of God's kingdom, of God, God's uh, kingship or, or real royalty is one of being open to uh, the moment in terms of what God wants for you and that really nothing you have is your own. And so basically, and yet you can still act in the world. You can still do things. It doesn't mean that you're totally passive. It's the opposite. You, you actually see more opportunities, right? Because there's no need to to make things the way necessarily you want them. So it seems like a paradox almost, right? So on the one hand, uh, the Yetzir Tov is one of making conscious decisions and doing something in the world. And on the other hand, it's also one of being aware of our great, complete dependence on God. So these two somehow, I'm trying to figure out in my brain, which is fairly active this morning, uh, how, how those two go together. But I, I think it has to do with, um, again, you know, do we draw on our kind of earthly abilities or do we draw on our the abilities of our soul? And so when we understand that God is the one ruling and we have nothing of our own, then it's, it's, we can really open up to a much more powerful and deeper level of who we are. And we can actualize that more. Um, and we can also see, again, we can see more, you know, that what people act, other people actually need. And so we, we tend to then do more proactive things for others, because we're not so kind of fixated on, on trying to control everything. You know, trying to make this happen, or make this happen, or make this, we're, we're open. So, and it's a danger also, in, in, in being too proactive, is that it can become, it can become a way by which really you show your own power as opposed to trying to implement something positive in the world. Um, so a, a teenager, uh, a yelled, so to speak, uh, actually has, has, this, has this very positive thing, which is they understand that they're not, they don't actually have anything, and yet they still have the ability to do in the world. And basically the Zohar is telling us that that's the, that's the way to look at our lives, period. That that we, we shouldn't look at our lives as if, you know, um, what was it like Pharaoh said, um, it's a famous thing he said. Uh, you know, I made myself. Uh, you know, I made myself, and I'm also God, or something like that. What's that? What's that puzzle? Do you remember? Whatever. It's a puzzle. Pharaoh is very famous. He says, "I'm. I made myself, and I and I'm God." You know, and you see it all the time in like the business world and in any world where people are successful. You know, and a lot of times they're. You know, oh, it's all because I. My strength made this for me. You know, and really when you when when you meet sometimes more honest people who are successful. So they'll always say, I was so lucky. You know, <laughs> I put myself in the right spot, and I did the, I did a lot, but I, it, I was lucky. I, I met the right person at the right time, and I went, you know. And so it's that, that seems like such a small thing, but that's a huge recognition, you know, that, that again, that, that, that it really all, it really comes from God, you know. And uh, it's like the uh, uh, Rav Nemirov said, uh,